this look okay? Anyways, hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Um, as of late, I've I've have I, I've slowed down gear review videos, and I'm thinking about like what I watch on YouTube, what's inspiring me right now. Um, and I want to make a video to share with you guys what those are. Now, I was going to go and be like, eh, what are some of the old photographers? The reality is I don't follow or read the books of those old photographers, the cliche ones, or I shouldn't say cliche, but the greats like Henry Cartier-Bresson or whoever else, right, that do a really, really good job um, or did a good job in the past. But more of like, what are the modern folks today that inspire me that we can like, I can link you to and we can talk about and we can watch. And part of it is a popularity contest because if they're not as popular on YouTube, then I probably wouldn't know about them. Um, but I wanna share some with you guys, like what photographers on YouTube today are inspiring me. They're more photo focused and less gear review focused. And candidly, I think I made a mistake or I'm, I transitioned a little bit out of this first two or three years of my, um, my YouTube channel, I'm not saying gear won't be a constant thing that I play with and, and talk about here, here and there, but I've less watched people like Tony Northrup or like Jared Polin or anybody else. And when I'm actually watching people that are, are making images and content with their, with their cameras, stuff that I find really, really interesting. So I made a list here, it's in front of me. And um, I wanna share with you people that I am following right now that I find really, really good and I want to get your comments on this, you know, below. Like, do you, do you think this is a pretty good list, comprehensive list? Who might I be missing? Go ahead and share it with me down below because there's probably a lot that I'm missing here. And, um, you know, uh, let me know, maybe disagree with that. So we're going to start first off with uh, landscape photographers, so landscape focused photographers. And first and foremost, I'm shooting on a Fuji right now. I keep going back to Fuji. I like Fuji a lot. And that is Andy Mumford. Andy Mumford, uh, he makes amazing images with... APS-C Fuji cameras for landscape. I think he's one of the best I've ever seen on YouTube. He does a tremendous job, is, is imaging or is editing and, and everything is just fantastic. So I really, really like him. Um, a second one is, and I have a book here, he's not really on YouTube, but he's somebody that I've followed for a long time. Even when I shot Sony APS-C, it's uh, this guy right here. This is Chris Burkhard. This is his book, Wayward. My wife got this for me. It's actually, uh, it's actually signed by him inside here. So that's really, really cool. Um, but Chris Burkhardt does really cool stuff. Just the adventures he goes on and um, the images he makes with his cameras, I think are really good. So I like reading and, and checking out Chris Burkhardt's stuff. Next up, there's an obvious one. It's Thomas Heaton. Um, he gets mentioned a lot. I enjoy watching his channels. I enjoy kind of like his whole van life and camping. I think he makes good images. He kind of fluctuates from like film to digital, from minimalistic to more traditional landscape. He's all over it, but I enjoy watching him and his presentation and all the different angles he puts in. It's a lot of effort, and I think he does a really good job on his channel, and I think his images look really, really good. Uh, next up, and I, the reason why I like this guy is probably the opposite of like a Chris Burkhardt or even a Thomas Heaton, it's AOWS. Um, he seems like a more simplistic guy. I think he's out, of, he's out of Europe somewhere, maybe Spain. Don't quote me on that. But he's this whole approach to photography is for the love of it. I mean, he, he just goes out and I think he has like an A7R2 maybe, and like two lenses. Uh, he used to shoot everything on like Sony one inch stuff. He's a Sony guy. Um, and he's not like chasing the newest gear. In fact, he barely does. I don't know if he's, uh, you know, he lives within his means or maybe he doesn't make a lot of money, but I love that about him. He's like, I don't need the latest gear. I don't need the A7R4. I don't need the A7 IV, whatever. Uh, Nikon this or that, he just, goes out and he shoots and he's almost in black and white exclusively and traditionally square and he just does a good real moody black and white shots and so I enjoy watching him. Um, next up, totally different reason, Photo Trippers. Uh, that channel I think is hilarious. It's more entertainment than anything. I think him and his wife are awesome. The skits he does, again, a real simple approach to his vlogs. He shoots with a DJI uh, Osmo Pocket so he's not going for like this, you know, crazy setup, but he just b takes you along for the story. And at the end of the day, I think his images end up being really, really good here on YouTube. So Photo Trippers is another one. Um, let's see. And then last but not least, uh, there's a guy named Henry Mum Henry Turner. He's kind of newer. His channel, I, I was watching him when I got into Nikon and uh, I watched it blow up quite a bit. He shoots a Nikon Z7 Mark II, I think now. But before he did shoot like a Nikon DSLR crop sensor. 
He was making amazing images. He was doing his vlogs on an EM1 Mark II, and he just, he's out of the Lake District um, over in Europe there, and he makes amazing, I think he makes good images. He does a really, really good job, and he's just really passionate. Um, he's like over the top a little bit, but he's really, really good. Uh, and he's fun to follow. He just makes you love love photography a bit. Um, I think that kind of sets the stage and, and covers all the ones I had in my mind for landscape. It doesn't mean there's not other ones that are really good, but that's one of them. Now, going more to like lifestyle portraiture, if you will, um, I have this guy, Zine, if you look right here. This is um, a guy named Paul C. Smith. He's out of New Zealand. I watch him quite a bit. Ironically, as I was making this list, uh, he just posted a video this morning, so I'm like cracking up. I, I got down this topic on the way home from California yesterday on the plane, and I was watching a bunch of videos, and I, like, it dawned on me. I'm like, I don't watch the review channels as much anymore. Um, I watch people that are actually making images. Anyways, this is his zine. It's called Incidents of Isolation. He shoots on a Leica M8. He also shoots film. Um, I had a Leica M8. That's kind of how I found him, and I've really continued to watch him. I just think he does a really good job with editing and his tones, and he's got this minimalistic approach. Paul C. Smith, uh, he's, he's really, really good. Another guy, his name is Dan Milner. Um, Dan Milner does a whole bunch of different stuff. His videos are really like artsy, kind of weird. He does them in black and white. He'll do like, you know, just off his GoPro. He's, he's like a pure photographer. I think he used to do photojournalism. He used to shoot some Leica stuff. I think he's shooting some Fuji now, but he's got a bunch of other things. He's a gear doesn't matter kind of guy. Um, and he goes off on topics. He does like, he answers questions. People ask him about things, and his, his answers are usually thought-provoking, I think really, really good. In fact, he's like the antithesis of, of my channel. Like, he, he probably clicked on my channel once and said, this guy's disgusting, and, and clicked off. But Dan Milner, um, if you get into some of his work, is really good. He does some, lately, it seems to me, like some really uh, abstract stuff, or like he's been doing double exposures. But he's got this mindset of, like, telling the story and putting photos in, you know, series and doing bodies of work that are months or years or decades long versus the typical stuff you find on YouTube, even my stuff where it's like, hey, I had this camera for a day, Pff, check this out. He's he's more of a, a true photographer. So I, I like Dan Milner. Um, and then another one, he's becoming popular more and more, uh, Ben Staley, I think his channel is called Art and Adventure. I should look that up. Um, Anyways, he's a Leica shooter. He was shooting pretty much exclusively on a, I think he still has a Leica Q2. I think the story is he sold all his stuff and bought a Leica Q2. And he shoots portraits. And again, he's a real artsy dude, kind of these weird presentations, puts weird music to it. The way he delivers his videos are really, really weird, but um, are interesting, I guess. I shouldn't say weird with a negative connotation, but they're interesting, they're different. And his, his images are fantastic as well. So I really like Ben Staley. He does a really good job. And then I'll get this, this one other one. Hold on a second. This is not a person. It's a website. It's a website of people that are passionate about their brand. It's, it's Olympus passion. This might, you might think this is stupid. Every once in a while they put out issues, paper copies. I think they have three right now. This is issue two. I have issue one. I haven't purchased issue three. I'm not shooting Olympus right now. Um, but why I like this book so much for an inspiration is it's full of people's photos and they're good. And they're, it, it's like a, what do you call it? Like a fanboy site, if you will. But people are making incredible images with totally cheap gear. Like you can click through here and someone's shooting on like the original EM5 with the kit lens. And you're like, dude, they took that with that camera? Yeah, here's an example right here. EM5 Mark II with the 40 to 150. Like, Great image. It's just, it's full of that. It's got stories. They talk about why Olympus. They talk about, you know, why, why they choose that over full frame or some of the more quote unquote popular gear. This Olympus Passion website, this Olympus Passion magazines, if you can get them, are really, really cool. Okay. So that's kind of that lifestyle-ish type of genre. In my mind, it is anyways. I want to move to one wildlife photographer. Now, there are others out there, but one guy I think just knocks it out of the park. His name's Morton Hilmer. Uh, I don't know where he's out of, like Germany or something, but he, he, I think he's a Nikon ambassador. He shoots Nikon stuff. He goes and does these awesome hunts, if you will, for, uh, you know, it could be moose or whatever, all types of types of wildlife. And he like brings you along and again, puts a ton of work and effort into his editing and his, his recording. And he's out in remote, remote areas. So you can just imagine how much uh, planning had to go in terms of like food 
and, and, and batteries and charging and, and SD cards and space. I mean, he'll set up shop in like the middle of the Arctic, in the middle of bum Egypt nowhere. And he's in a tent and you're like, dude, that's just bonkers. He's getting some really, really cool wildlife shots. So Morton Hilmer is awesome. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, kind of the film hipster people. I know some people cr cringe at these, but there's three people that I I do watch um, taking pictures of like homes and random flowers and stuff like that. But they do it in a way that I'm still interested in. And one of them is Willem Verbeek. Willem Verbeek, he's, you know, he blew up with the whole film craze. He does a good job. He can, what's interesting about me and these other, actually everybody in this genre is they take random pictures of things that are so ordinary and they still look good to me most of the time. I, I think it looks really good. Um, so Willem Verbeek is one. The other one is Jason from Grainy Days. Again, he's another one kind of like Photo Trippers where I like to watch for his actual presentation. He makes a bunch of dry humor jokes. I like that kind of humor. And uh, he does a good job too, just bringing you along on the ride with this him and his friend. I think he's got a friend named Caleb that's from uh, the channel called Bad Flashes. But anyways, his images can be really good as well. He does a lot of like broken down homes and stuff like that. I am curious as to like what he's gonna do with all that work. Is, is he working on something that he's gonna put together? I don't know, but it's, it's I still think he's funny in the way he presents his, his channel is really, really good. And then, you know, from street photography perspective, I had a hard time picking anybody because I don't find anybody to be consistently good to watch on street photography. My thing with street photography is randomly taking shots of people walking is boring to me. Taking shots at people's backs is boring to me. Um, where I think street photography is absolutely brilliant is the people that are able to see, you know, the compositional masterpieces in chaos, where they're able to see like, you know, rule of thirds or juxtapositions or like contradicting scenes and they catch it in the moment of strangers. It's incredible. It means it wasn't set up. It's really, really good. I don't want to see a stranger walking through a shadow unless like the lighting is just so incredible that it's like an interesting picture. But I had a hard time picking one photographer that's able to do that consistently. I know Joe Greer is, is real popular. Um, you know, he, he's like a shooter. He shoots a lot of film. He does a good job. Uh, but it's really hard to find somebody that does that on a regular basis. I follow street photography on like Instagram or whatever. And the ones that do it, or the pictures that are really good, like there's something in those pictures that's like almost like once in a blue moon. It's so hard to get. I don't know if anybody that does it all the time. And I, I guess I understand why street photographers go out and shoot so much. And there's probably 98% garbage. And, and the one or 2% that happens to be good is like incredible to me. So it's hard to find or name anybody that, that does that on a consistent basis. I like Samuel Street Life. He's one, right? Rico and stuff. He's pretty popular. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my list. Hopefully you guys stuck around for that rambling. That's who I'm following and watching a lot of these days. These are my inspirations, modern day inspirations that have a popularity on YouTube. You guys can go watch them. Um, also, if you made it this far, if you follow me on Instagram, I, I want to, I want you to go follow me on Vero because what I've, Instagram has always been for me and will continue to be is where I put pictures like my kids. That's not really my photography for photography's sake. I, I, I'll post political stuff on there sometimes. If you don't like my, my politics, then don't go there. Um, and it's it's and Instagram sucks recently. Let me, let me show you a video right now. Like they have these reels. I have no idea, guys, before you make the comments, I don't like search these things. I don't watch these adult content. And for some reason, Instagram has shown me like every so many pictures I go down, there's like a suggested reels tab. And it's like, borderline pornographic stuff. And it's just, it's really starting to annoy me. Instagram's pissing me off. Um, and so I, I'll post stuff there because I have family that follows me of my kids and it links into Facebook, which is where my family's at. So I'll post there stuff with my kids. But go find me on Vero. That's where I'm gonna, I've been curating more photography specific stuff as of late. Um, and I'd rather interact in a non- algorithm manipulated way. I'd rather have direct interaction with a hundred people than 5,000 people on Instagram. Not saying that's the case for me, but like, I just, I'm getting really sick of Instagram. So, uh, anyways, yeah, a lot of these guys, you know, I'd mentioned have inspired me to make books that I have at home, um, and continue to shoot photos. And it's the reason for this channel. And it's kind of more where I want to go is these style channels, um, less gear review stuff. So 
Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We made it through this one. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on the next one.